welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it here on this Monday. The stock market had a uh, a down day. Seems like it's been forever since it's had one of those. But it was actually uh, really the worst day, as you can see from the chart here, the worst day since this rally uh, started on, I guess it was the 4th of October. And it came really at the top of this box that we've been looking at, uh, studying the last several weeks. You know, we've been range bound, bouncing up and down 7 to 10% in either direction, and uh, fell out of the box, of course, on the 3rd and 4th of October, looked to break down and uh, reversed course intraday, and then it's been pretty much straight up since then. But as I always say, it's very important to monitor and, and study the quality of any rally. We obviously want to look at the charts from the uh, technical perspective and, and, and see where some of the moving averages are and some of the support and resistance and all those technical terms, but we also want to dig down, and it's harder to show you this stuff, but we want to dig down and look at the internals how much demand there is, how much supply there is, uh, you know, how much up versus down volume, how many stocks are making new highs versus new lows. All of those things go into deciding if we're going to allocate capital or build cash up and uh, keep it on the sidelines. Now, before we get into some of this, uh, we'll go over some of the numbers. The Dow Jones down almost 250 points, down 2%, and really the worst of the three indices today. The S&P bounced around 1,200 several times and finished right at 1,200.86, a nice round number there you can see, down almost 2%, and the NASDAQ down 53 points to 26.14, uh, down almost 2% as well. Transports down 2.8%. Utilities were pretty much flat on the day, and of course, if you look at all the indices out there, it's one of the only ones that is up on the year, up 8% on the year, utilities as a whole. I still like that area. I've been long that area uh, throughout this. Not only do you get the income, but you get the relative outperformance on the uh, capital gains side as well. Financials, of course, took a beating. Bank stocks uh, down over 3% today, worst area. And we also saw the Russell 2000, 3.35% to the downside. So once again, uh, risk off a few weeks ago, risk on in the last two weeks, right? You have all the material stocks going up, the banks and financials going up, what could be considered short covering. And then we come in today, and again, what's holding up? You know, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, drugs, treasuries doing well. What's going down? Material stocks, uh, financials. Uh, anything having to do with global growth. After the bell, we do have some interesting news. IBM comes in, earnings okay, but some people didn't like them, so the stock is uh, currently down about $10 after the bell. Uh, Crocs, C-R-O-X, down 37% <laughs> after uh, this, this afternoon, this evening. And then VMware coming in light as well. So these earnings are going to start coming in fast and furious, and uh, again, analysts are going to look at this and, and make a decision on, is it just a one-off, some of these companies reporting poor numbers, or is the group showing more slowing of growth? And I really think what's going on right now with some of this economic data is the fact that you're seeing almost a relief rally, right? People were going, we're definitely going into recession, and I'm in the camp that thinks we're going into recession or are already in a recession, but... As I've said, it doesn't matter what I think if it's officially a minus 0.1 or a plus 0.1, right? It's the fact that we aren't growing at 3 or 4%, and it's moving in the direction of flat to down. So whether it's technically 0 or minus 0.1 is irrelevant, I think. And it's, it's the stock market reacts to that direction it's going, how much, how much growth there is. And I think what we've seen over the last couple of weeks is a relief rally, not only where we technically oversold, too many people would lean in one direction, but I think we've also been seeing a relief in the sense that some of this economic data has been coming in better than expected. And it's not great, but it's better than expected, and maybe for the time being, people go, well, we're not in a recession. I think just like last summer, you saw a soft patch in the economy, right? It was an economy where, of course, we had the flash cr crash, and during the summer, a lot of the... Uh, Economic indicators were pointing down, leading economic indicators. And then they, they came back, and it was, uh, again, I pointed out last summer, if you're following the podcast, it was more of a correction. And uh, now I think it may be just the opposite. I think what we're seeing is a almost a strong patch. It's a temporary 
data set that's coming in better than expected, but I think it's just temporary. I think you're going to continue to see weakness going forward. And, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because it's it's uh, we want to be uh, investing in our companies. We want the economy to get back on track. We want our friends that are looking for jobs or underemployed to get back to work. We want all of that. So we don't want to wish that we're in a bear market, but I think what we're seeing is a deterioration, and we're seeing more stocks being dumped on the market and sellers very, very active in the last two months since late July, early August, when we had this big decline right in here. Uh, we're still seeing intense selling going on, and the rallies don't have the volume associated with them. They don't have the good quality of volume that we would like to see. So overall, I'm still uh, fairly bearish, and really, besides my existing long positions that I have, I still have a lot of cash and have a lot of income-producing things, but I've actually uh, been selling here recently. In fact, I sold some Intel. They report tomorrow. Could be good numbers, but Intel has a nice 10% profit in it, and the market still looks suspect to me, so I locked in some profits today and got out of Intel. Uh, great company. It's made a nice run. But it's, it could be setting up for a triple top. In fact, let me go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like. And you can see Intel kind of broke out of this little downtrend that I have up here. Uh, I was making lower highs, broke out of that. So I had owned it for a while. You can see here on the green, that's when I bought it. It ran up, sold off during the, the recent sell-off, and then it just uh, had a really nice, nice run. I just feel like it's gone so far so fast. You know, on a weekly basis, uh, you've got this going on right now. So I'm still not uh, necessarily comfortable with it. I think the stock is cheap. I think I would love to, to invest in it. But it's hard in this market when things race up as fast as they have been. And the market is in this trading range. We were at the top of the trading range. So you use some discipline. You sell it. I may, I, it may gap up on good earnings. I don't know. They come out tomorrow. But, uh, again, it's a 50-50 proposition. And when it's 50-50, I choose not to really play that game. And I think that's the case right now. It's already run up. Could have great numbers, and the stock may still sell off. But if there's one area that I really like right now as far as earnings and so forth, it, it is technology. You know, we saw that with Google last week, which I uh, remain long. You know, Google has been uh, uh, obviously volatile in here. This is a weekly picture going back to 08. But uh, it's been very volatile. But, of course, it had a really nice week last week on uh, Friday. It had that big, big jump up on good earnings. So kind of a sloppy technical picture, but I'm really banking on the fact that this Google Plus is uh, working well. But technology in general is doing well. Apple, of course, is going to report earnings. iPhone 4S doing extremely well. I like tech, but again, you got to have some discipline in this market. you got to sell when you don't really want to sell, and you are going to buy when you really don't want to buy. So uh, we're going to have earnings coming out, but again, getting back to the overall stock market here, you know, we've got volume that's been declining and again the quality of that volume in fact the volume was a little bit higher today than friday so we had a big update friday but the and it was on low volume but the volume was higher today than it was on friday so not what you want to see now here's what the bulls would hope the bulls would say look we've got the 21 day moving average down here we've got a 50 day moving average maybe we get a pull back to the 1170 range and then we turn around and we bounce back up that would be the bullish argument the bearish argument would be it's at the top of the range. We've seen this before. I'm not going to get sucked into this again. It's going to roll over and head straight back down. Just be careful because we don't know what's going to happen. It's a probabilities game. What I'm telling you is underneath the surface, the internals are, are, are weak right now. And in fact, just like last summer when we had some kind of sell-off and, and, it, and it rallied back, this time it's just the opposite. We're, we're getting weaker internals whereas last summer they were actually stronger there wasn't a bunch of active selling it was mostly just profit taking we're not seeing that right now we're really seeing a lot of uh, dumping of stocks now if you compare this to last summer you remember this is the big flash crash day bounced up afterwards we headed lower really a choppy nasty summer had this inverse head and shoulders and then off to the races the difference was last summer the as i said the internals were much better uh, the economy was in much better shape than it is now. We were still in a recovery from the 08 lows. This time, you look at it and go, what's the difference? I mean, yeah, it's a little more volatile than it was, you know, because it's happening so fast, whereas over here it's spread out a little more. But the moves are just the same. Why isn't this just a pause? 
And it's because, again, we look underneath the surface. We look at how many stocks are making new highs versus new lows. We look at how many sectors are participating. We take out all of the closed-in funds and things that aren't actual businesses. We look at the businesses and we see what's going on, and the economy is getting weaker than it was last summer at this time. And we also see that there's a real antsiness on the part of sellers. Whenever the prices rise, they sell into it. Last summer, it was just the opposite. Whenever there was a dip, they bought into it. So, again, from the naked eye, you look at this and say, I don't see what you're saying, Carl. It's just, it's just volatility. We've already sold off. The worst is over. I hope it is, but I'm telling you that underneath the surface, it's not the same as last summer. So the way I'm playing this is, A, we want income, and that includes there's still some very good corporate bonds out there. They're not the deals that were there in 2008 where you could buy them at 70 cents on the dollar, but there are some good deals out there, bonds yielding 5 6 7% for the next four or five years, good companies, and there may be better deals in the future. It just depends on how bad the economy gets, but... You also want income-producing equities as well, and there's plenty of those. They're holding up very well, the utilities, uh, health care, places like that. What I don't want to be doing right now is in some of the uh, REITs. You know, you look at companies like Annaly Mortgage, big fat dividend. I think it's 14%, something like that. But what's happened is, remember what they do. They, they basically borrow money at very, very low rates, virtually nothing, and then they go out and invest in securities, mortgage securities of various types, and they collect the spread, and they leverage it up. And they're very good at it. They're, they're one of the best, the big, the big kahuna. But Operation Twist is only a, a negative for them. What is Operation Twist? That's where the Fed is selling short-term bonds, which will raise interest rates on the short end a little bit. And they're buying long-term bonds, which will lower the rates on the long end. So I think eventually they're going to be squeezed, right? Their profit margin is going to be squeezed almost like a bank's would be squeezed or anything else. And you can see how the stocks reacted. It was at 1875 back in June. It fell really hard on some regulation potential things that could have hurt them and the whole industry. Snapped back, went almost up to a high 1850. And then here recently you can see 1825 all the way down to 1450 <clears throat> in August. And it's, it's recovered a little bit. Uh, but again, has some pressure on it. So I'm staying away from that. So just because something has a 13 or 14 percent dividend yield, that's not what I'm talking about. I'd rather have a 3 percent dividend yield where a company's raising it every few quarters and it's consistent. We know they're going to pay it and they're in a, a less cyclical business, perhaps. So be careful of that. But also cash. I have a lot of cash right now. And I think that's important. There's no, it's not earning us a lot, but. We can go, and when there is some capitulation selling or the selling episode exhausts itself, we can go take advantage of individual deals. So, again, what we've been reiterating lately is trading, if you wish, shorting, if you wish, cash, and income production. I would not be loading the boat with mutual funds. I would not be loading the boat with very cyclical things tied to the U.S. economy. At some point, once this runs its course, whether it's a month or six months or two years, we're going to want to focus once again on global growth. And if you notice, that's the stuff that rallied the most in the last few days. It gets hit the hardest today. So even though you may say, what about India and China and these places that are growing so fast? Yes, I've been a proponent of that for years, and I love that area. But I've got very little exposure to it right now because I know how those things move. And they move more volatile than the overall stock market. You know, look at the emerging markets here recently. Uh, I drive this little trend. It was bouncing around in here and then, uh, of course, broke down to the downside. So down 3.5% today. So be very careful about having your fundamentals for long term and then how does that measure up with the current stock market. And that works on the opposite, too. Sometimes the stock market is so oversold, it's going to rally even if the economic data is horrible. And that's what we've been seeing lately is that the stock market – has been going up, and everybody's going, I thought this was a bad economy. Hey, the stock market and the economy are different animals, and the stock market is going to move on its own at times. Over the long run, if we have a bad economy and it's slowing down and the unemployment rate goes up and consumer confidence goes down and retail sales go down, the stock market isn't far behind, and that's what we're seeing. So I'm not happy with the economy. I'm not happy with the internals. So for the time being, you know, again, haven't participated all the way up here on this rally, but 
Also, uh, don't lose sleep on a day where the Dow's down 245 points. And so it works both ways. But be flexible. I've been, I've been saying that. Be flexible. Don't be, a, don't be scared to trade a little bit. Just uh, keep it smaller right now while the volatility. And if you, if you don't want to participate in the volatility, take a big chunk, move it to the sidelines, and just trade with a portion of the uh, account. Okay, for the rest of the week, we got uh, tomorrow PPI coming out. And um, and uh, housing uh, NHB housing market index mortgage applications on uh, Wednesday CPI coming out on Wednesday as well housing start Wednesday is going to be a pretty big day uh, the beige book etc. And then on the uh, 20th, which I guess is about Thursday, we're going to have uh, initial jobless claims again 400,000 as you can see is the estimate. So a lot of uh, more economic data coming out. It's going to paint the picture. And again, if it's better than expected. Markets could potentially rally some more, but I think the overall trend is pretty negative. So, look, as I've said for for numerous podcasts, if this market is for real and if that was the bottom, then the market will prove itself to us. It had a few good days during this rally, no question about it. Uh, but the but as it's gone on, the volumes become weaker and weaker, and the internals become weaker and weaker. So, not convinced that that was the bottom. So, just be very careful. And if you think it was, why not buy some things and put some stops underneath them at the very least? So that's what I, how I would be playing this market. Let it prove itself to us for the time being. Don't be a hero. This is uh, real money we're dealing with. All right, folks, have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check out twitter.com slash carleggers, carleggers.com, free subscription up in the top right. Google Plus, I'm on there. A lot of new users are on there. Comments are great on there as well. And uh, eggerscapital.com for the money management website. Take care. Have a wonderful day.